Welcome everybody. Good morning and thank you for joining us for Wednesday Wisdom for the Jewish Museum's live object talk series. My name is Lisa and today I'm going to be sharing a fascinating object from our collection that links to this week's theme of text. This object is one of over 40,000 objects that are in our collection and our programs preserve important stories and objects and also explore connections between faiths and cultures. This week, the theme is text and I have selected a beautiful and unique object in our collection which highlights the beauty of text. I'm now going to share my screen so that you can see the object. Okay, so I want you to just take a moment to take a close look at this object. What do you notice first about it? What direction do your eyes move? What shapes do you see? What does this object you think about? So what we can see, first of all, is a piece of parchment, which is made from animal skin, and it has on it some Hebrew writing. So this is handwritten. Sometimes the Hebrew writing forms different shapes such as in the shape of a menorah. We also see Hebrew writing inside of arches at the top of the image and in circles both at the top and at the bottom of the image. So this object is a Kabbalistic amulet. Amulets in Judaism are called Kamea which in Hebrew means to bind. Now amulets have a long history of use in many different religions and form of spirituality as a means to protect oneself, one's family and one's possession from harm and more importantly, from evil. Now this particular amulet was written by Chazan or Cantor, Isaac Amos Nino in 1832 as protection for his home. Chazan Isaac Amos Nino was a well-known follower of the ancient spiritual wisdom of Kabbalah, or what some might describe as Jewish mysticism. This amulet was presented to the Jewish Museum London in 1938 by Chaim Manuel Casnino, MBE, who was a communal leader from a wealthy Manchester Sephardi family. Sephardi Jewish people are Jews that have their cultural background in Spain, Portugal, and parts of North Africa. After the Second World War, Chaim Casnino moved to London, where he and his relatives largely ran the Spanish and Portuguese synagogue in Maida Vale. It remains unclear how the amulet changed hands from its writer Isaac Amos Nino to the 1938 donor, Chaim Michael Cansino. However, we can assume that it was transferred via a contact point within the Sephardi community of London. It's the size and the structure of this amulet that makes it unique. So what we have in the text is different blessings to protect the home. So it contains verses of Torah that are popular for protective purposes, such as Psalm 91 and the priestly blessing. It also contains the Ben Porat prayer, which is a classical Sephardi prayer used against the evil eye. Now, if we look closely at the lower part of the amulet, uh, surrounding the two menorah shapes, we see a series of squares. 
These are magical letter squares, which uses a device called gematria. Gematria is the practice of identifying the numerical value of Hebrew letters in order to reveal deeper meanings. So for example, the letter Aleph is one, the letter Bet would be two, the letter Gimel would be three, and so on. As such, an additional layer of meaning can be reached by looking at the numbers which make up a particular word. An example of this is the Hebrew word Chai, which means life. The two letters which make up the word Chai, Chet and Yud, together add up to the number 18. So the number 18 in Judaism symbolizes life and it's considered a mitzvah to say, for example, when donating money to either donate in multiples of 18 or to add an extra 18p to the donation to signify or promote a long life. Now in this amulet, we also see examples of shiviti, which are representations of God's name in the shape of candles or a menorah. And these are used for meditative contemplation. Shiviti is the first word in the Hebrew text of Psalms 16.8, meaning I have placed. And the complete verse means I have placed the Lord always before me. Representations of Shiviti are often, are quite often found on Jewish amulets. So you can see a little bit, uh, a close up of the letters uh, which make up the menorah. So now I'll explain a little bit more about Kabbalah. To study Kabbalah is to study the spiritual rules of the world and to try to understand how these rules interact and influence our lives. The practice of Kabbalah is over a thousand years old. And the word Kabbalah is a Hebrew word, which means that which is received. And it was received or created depending on your belief system around the 12th or 13th century in Provence or, and Catalonia. With the expulsions from Spain in 1492, Jewish people and Kabbalism was brought around Europe. Kabbalists read the same Jewish texts and practice the same Jewish rituals as many Jewish people. However, they might find additional layers of meaning in them. The two main texts in Kabbalah are the Sefer Yetzirah, which is the book of creation written about the third or fourth century CE and the Zohar. The Zohar is mostly written in Aramaic with around 10% of it written in Hebrew. It was originally attributed to Moses de Leon, who lived between 1250 and 1305 CE. However, it is more recently believed that the Zohar is a compilation of texts from many different authors. It contains instructions for mystical ascent, dialogue between rabbis, and many stories. In Kabbalism, there is this idea that God is not separate from anything, but that everything gets a little bit less divine the further away you move from God, from the source. Our material world, which we live in, is very far away from this divine source, but there are still elements of the divine within our world. A good example is to imagine a pebble dropped in water. And where the pebble drops, there are ripples that occur. And the ripples are strongest, closest to the pebble, and they fade out as they get further away. This creation, this relates to the creation emanating from the source and fading out as it gets further away. So our material world is basically on the shoreline. So it's quite far from the source which might help us to understand why the practice of keeping amulets, such as this one, to protect oneself and one's home from harm and misfortune might be common among those who practice Kabbalah. So this brings me to the end of my object talk. I do hope that you have enjoyed exploring the theme of text through this amulet. 
And please do join us next week on Wednesday, the 17th of June at 12 noon, where my colleague Emma will be sharing an object for Refugee Week. Thank you and see you then.